stepping back in the house of the Lord this morning. And I was, uh, I you come with a prayer on your lips and pray for the Sunday school lesson for all the services this morning. We want to read just to you a little bit this morning concerning Paul's ministry and what uh, what he told the people. And we want you, if you would, to turn to Acts 9 and verse 5, just or verse 3, just a minute. And then we might turn to another scripture. But if you would turn to the book of Acts, chapter 9, in verse 3, and we're talking here about Paul. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? This was the calling of Saul. This was the, the thing that, that stirred Saul's heart. This was the thing that uh, pricked his heart. Right. This was the thing that got his attention. And he had been a, he had been a bad person. And he had done things that he shouldn't do, mistreating people, bringing them to the law. And that's where that he was going when uh, this happened to him. And we all are familiar with the scriptures, but we uh, like to refresh our minds sometimes, and uh, the Lord will bless us with a different thought, and uh, we can we can uh, be blessed with His Word. But He said here, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now notice it says here, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Right. Now, these pricks, I've looked this up uh, and tried to study a little bit of it, and uh, uh, the most of the definitions that I can find is, is a sharp, piercing pain that is made by a sharp instrument. That's a prick. And so this morning, Paul's heart was pricked here on the road to Damascus, and he knew it, and Jesus knew it, and Jesus said unto him, it's hard for thee to kick you in the pricks. It's, hard, it's going to be hard, and it is hard for you to understand a different way of living. And listen, this morning when the Lord spoke to our hearts, he changed our way of going. He Amen. changed our way of thinking. He changed our every way. And not that we were completely away from that life of sin, because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. And listen, this morning, we're still sinners. And we'll be sinners until the breath leaves this old body, because right. this old body is sinful. This old body has not been saved. And listen, until it is dead, will it be forgiven the sins it commits. But now we ask the Lord to, to help us with these sins and to uh, help us to uh, live a better way and to, and to keep control of this body. But listen, it's, it's like James said about the tongue. It's an unruly thing. Right. And it's set on hills of fire. And so this morning, as we see this year, in, in, uh, as the Lord told him this, he says in verse 6, And he trembling... And astonished, said, Lord, what will thou help me to do? <laughs> and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. So now I would, if you would, to turn over to the book of 1 Corinthians. As Paul, as in 1 Corinthians 1, as Paul is writing to the church here at Corinth, <clears throat> in verse 17, uh, and he, he had done, done some writing, but in verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And so Paul is saying this morning, Hey, I've come to you not preaching baptism, I'm preaching God's word, mm -hmm. and he's saying this, that I am not to confuse people. I'm not to persuade people through the worldly words that I speak, but he says here, 
through a, a, a closer, loving word. So he says here, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made to none effect. And this morning, the gospel, which should be preached to the world daily, the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it all hinges on that gospel. Amen. And listen, that's what Paul came to do. Paul made it very clear that to these people that believe that baptism completes salvation, listen, that I came not to baptize. And right. If he came for the purpose of salvation, listen, he would have said, I come to baptize you and to see that you repent. But he didn't say that. Yeah. And so this morning, we as God's people need to be a, 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 on lookout for these that are using these things, using and mis misreading the Bible and misusing the words of God to promote salvation uh, and to tell people this is a must in your life to be saved because listen, it's not. Right. And we this morning need to understand that with a repentant heart, with that prick in the heart, as Paul had, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts and our souls. And this morning, each and every one of you that are saved should have a remembrance of the thing, the, the time that, hap that happened to you. And you should realize what, what I'm talking about and what God's Word is talking about this morning. That prick in the heart, Amen. that call from on high, that, that voice of the Holy Spirit saying to you, hey, I'm, I'm, call, I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm pleading with you, I'm, I'm saying to you that you're in sin and you're in danger of hell fire. Right. And this, this morning, uh, I remember very well, and an old preacher, the years and years and years and years ago, he preached, he preached hell fire, and he preached damnation, and listen, this morning, they say, oh, I don't want my children to be scared, I don't want to hear them about that hell fire, I don't want to hear them about the cross, and that the, the blood that run down Jesus' side and the spirit that went up in his side, I don't want to hear that. They'll scare him. Listen, people, that's what the world needs. This Amen. Morning. They need the gospel preached to them. They don't need this little honeydew business and you can go out here and sprinkle the baby when it's eight days old and he's ready to go through life. They don't need this thing that I can, old brother so-and-so, dear, bless his heart. He... He was a great old minister. He baptized me. You can ask them. You ask people this morning, or you say, oh, yes, I've been baptized. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's the people is being deceived. Amen. And listen, God is not pleased with it. He's not pleased with it at all. And I think this morning that it would behoove every one of us if we have the opportunity to tell people about our experience with the Lord. And if they right. inquire about baptism, that is something that it takes place after salvation and they need to understand it. And this morning, I know that the majority of you here understands this, but listen, this morning, I feel led to teach this because listen, y'all are not the only ones that's hearing this. This thing is going out into the world and we're, we're broadcasting it through the world and there's people out there that will hear it. And Amen. I know this morning that they need to hear it because there's so many this morning that's deceived right. and they think that they can do anything in the world that they want to do and because they've been baptized. But Paul said here in verse 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words. In other words, he didn't come there with these long, great big long words and telling them all this and all of that. And when you look, when these preachers that can do this and do that, they've studied, they went to school for it and they studied. And listen, when you leave the place, you're, you're, you're just as dumb as you was when you got there because the, all of these words, these worldly words and all, they do not they do not glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And so this morning he said, Hear not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And this morning we know that the cross of Christ, where Jesus Christ died on the cross, 
is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection, or it is a, uh, it is a thing that we need to understand and know what happened, why he came to this world, and why he died on the cross of Calvary, why he shed his blood for the remission of sins or for the covering of our sins, because this morning, when, when, when God looks upon us this morning and he sees his sins, listen, the blood of Jesus Christ has, he died for us and we have been saved. That blood, that blood covers us. Amen. And when, when God looks on it, he sees his dear son's blood and listen, it's, it's all forgotten. It's all forgiven. And this morning, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. This Amen. morning. And people, people in this world need to know these things. So now notice, for in, uh, in uh, notice here, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Now, I want you to see something this morning. In Psalms 53, 21, the fool, the fool, and here we're talking about foolishness, the fool has said there is no God. Right. Now, to me this morning, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. They are lost. They are undone. They're in a, a perishing condition. And foolishness, he says it's foolishness to them. And you talk to these to people out here this today, and you ask them, are you saved? Oh, what, what am I saved from? And listen, things like this, listen, it, it's, it's, it's the real McCoy out there this morning, people. People don't understand what you're asking them when you say, are you saved? Right. Have you, have you had an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ? They don't understand it. And listen to them, it's foolishness. But the fool, he says, well, hey, I don't understand that. He's just running on, and he's got something he don't even know what he's talking about. And it's foolishness to him, but the thing of it is, the foolishness leads to eternal damnation because the thing of the fool says there is no God. And here he says, but unto us, we that know the truth, we that are have been saved, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. So the, the preaching of the cross and that is the that is the great thing this morning and i've done mention it about they don't want people they don't want you to preach about the cross all leave that off somewhere and and, and we don't want to hear about uh, all of this stuff with the romans and the jews and how they crucified christ they don't want to hear it but listen that's what that's what is the needful thing this amen morning. That's why that one of the reasons why that Jesus died the way he did, because listen to get people's attention, and 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 he did, but listen not all of them, and they're mm -hmm. they're out there this morning roaming around, and so they're in bad shape. Now notice here, uh, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And the prudent uh, as uh, it's careful. Cautious, discreet, using sound judgment. And he so so he says here, <clears throat> for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And he's talking about the law. Where is the wise? Where is the scribes? Where is the disputers of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now notice, I want I want you to, I want you to read something with me if you would. Uh, as soon as I can find it in my notes here, I wanted to go over to Mark 16, and you all know where I'm headed for, but I want to read this to you and let you see something about this under, this baptism. In Mark 16, 16, <clears throat> in verse 15, Jesus is talking to them this morning, and, and this, is, this is some of the things that they, they pull from this scripture. And he said unto them, this is talking to Jesus, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now what is the gospel? It's the story of the death, burial, and the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And he says, Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth this gospel, that you're going to preach to him, and is baptized, shall be saved. They include... Baptism with salvation. 
Right. But they don't read the rest of it, or their new versions has changed it. Notice here. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Right. And so the belief in the, the crucifixion of Christ, the belief in the preaching of the cross to them that believe is salvation. But this baptism is not included in, in salvation. It is a show to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. It is a picture of your what your belief is based on, and that is it's a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he said here, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And now notice, and these signs that will follow these that be, that believe these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils now this morning you go to these churches and and some good sister or some good brother come along yeah i casted out the devils i put my hand up and said leave listen it's not all together talking about that people you have you have contact with the devil every day and it's it's a problem, and listen, the only way that you can get rid of that devil and get a little peace of mind is that you go to the Lord and ask him, Father, would you take this Satan, take this devil away from me? And he, seeing the blood of Jesus Christ, he hears your prayer, and he'll help you with these things. And that's why he's saying here, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils. In my in the name of Jesus, I can't I can't touch the devil. And there's nothing that I can do to him because listen, he's so much farther greater in strength and power and knowledge than me. But listen, I know that my brother and I know that my father can do th something for me that I need done. And this morning, when the devil goes to aggravating me and bothering me and putting these foolish thoughts in my mind. Listen, the only thing I can say is, Lord, you know the situation. You know I'm not, I'm not able to do this. So would you please take him away? Would you please pull in that string a little bit shorter that you've got around his neck? Because listen, he's got control of the devil. He's got control of him. And he can tighten that string any time that he wants to. And listen, bless your heart, so many times I need that because I'm dealing with something this morning in my flesh that is, is ungodly. It's sin. Mm -hmm. And listen, it's in my body, and, and, and all I can do is say, Lord, you're going to have to help me with it. Now notice, as we go on, in my name uh, cast out devils and shall speak with new tongues. So this morning, when we are saved, our our spirit changes, our, our attitude changes, and our language changes. And listen, sometimes I know when this old body has had, the, you've got to use them old filthy words and thoughts and all this. Listen, they, they blurt out, and they say something, and you bite your tongue, and the Holy Spirit comes to you. But listen, you have the Savior, Jesus Christ. Who you can go to and can and can and can ask him to take these things away from you and listen you will eventually speak with new tongues you will get that old thing for that you don't have to use that old ugly words and them ugly thoughts and, and i know they come to you but listen you have got a, enough of god in you salvation in your spirit here to block that and to push it out of your way and say, get thee behind me, uh, get away from me. And so he said here, they shall take up the serpents. Huh. And you know this morning, they make fun of that. A lot of people do it and say, well, he ain't gonna go out here and them snake, being snake handlers. But listen, there's more serpents than snakes. And you've got them out here walking on two feet. These old serpents that will come around to you and, and knowing that you are trying to serve the Lord and all of this, and they'll try to bite you with their old filthy beliefs and, and their old languages and things of this nature. And so listen, you have the ability this morning to say, I don't want to hear it. I, I, don't, I don't live for the devil. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And if they keep on, then you can say, well, I'll pray for you, brother, or I'll pray for you. You can't call him brother, but I'll pray for you. And listen, you'd be surprised what that'll do for you. That will help you get rid of that old serpent that's, that's wanting to bite you and to infect you with some of his junk that's going on. And so here is what he's, I think this is another thing that he's saying. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, we, we just see this morning that uh, people, they'll say, well, he can just go ahead and drink strict wine or any kind of poison he wants. It's not talking about that. People, he give us enough sense. He give us enough knowledge not to walk out in front of a car. And he give us enough sense not to drink uh, something that's going to poison us and kill us. But the thing of it is, this morning, there are so many, there are so many things out here that will, will, will hurt you. And, and you have to be careful with those things that, that you ingest and, and, and know what they're, what they're saying because sometimes people are very intelligent and they will present lies and that's the way that a lot of these are we're talking about this morning that are baptized for salvation they they've received a lie they've received a lie and they're in bad shape and so this morning i wanted you to under, understand this but now notice and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover people this morning i believe this morning that we as God's people can ask the Lord to help our sick people and I believe it's happening I believe you've seen it I believe you've seen it you've seen it and seen it and listen we have the uh, the the uh, the opportunity to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for uh, health for those now, I want to read you something again this morning in James. If you would turn over there, James 5. In James 5 and 16, very last of James. Now, notice, notice in verse 16, it says, Confess your faults. Now that's that this morning is the must to recognize your sins and to know this morning that you are not living above sin but that you need to confess your sins and the Holy Spirit comes to you and tells you hey uh, you've done this and you've done that and you shouldn't have done it and if the Holy Spirit is not if the Holy Spirit is not telling you these things and everything is happy-go-lucky all the time you need to do a little checking mm -hmm. because listen the Holy Spirit that's living within you and he comes to you and says hey you shouldn't have thought that you shouldn't have said that about them or you need to read your Bible more than what you do and you know that's one thing this morning about studying the old Bible the, the flesh despises to, to do it. Right. They'd rather look at television or it would rather get out here and play the game or watch a game on TV or something like that. But when you say, well, I had not and the Holy Spirit says, no, I'm going to raise the Bible. Well, you see that? You see that drawn away? Listen, notice what he says here. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed now notice, the effectual, <coughs> fervent, or the, dry, the direct pray for a person, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Right. And so this morning, if you're in, if you're in harmony, if you're in harmony with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're trying to serve Him, listen, your prayers does not go up unanswered they don't go up there and, and god's picking them out like this and saying well he, he don't need that he don't need that listen when god hears your prayer and he sees that blood he he knows your need and it may not be the need that you need think you need and it may not be the time that you need but listen when you get serious with god you're going to see something happen 
I'm telling you, you'll see something happen. And all in this world you've got to do is just say, Lord, I'm your servant, and I'm here, and I'm asking you to do this. And listen, it'll happen if it's if it's in his will. And, and here he's talking about praying for the sick. And Jesus prayed for the sick, or, or he touched the sick, and he healed the sick, and all this. And so he knows what you're, he knows what's happening in your life. And he knows that you love those people that you're praying for. And so he says here that the, the, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so the closer you are to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God this morning, the better off you are and the closer you can walk with them and the, and, and the, and the, and the, the, the sweeter the sweeter it is to walk in his steps. Amen. And listen, this morning when the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, Hey, uh, <clears throat> it's time for you to study your Bible. Well, think of it as an invitation that's beautiful. Right. And if he's there, and if he's, if he's with you when you're studying your Bible, he'll open things to you, maybe that you can't tell nobody else, Maybe you can't remember the next day, but he right there then he'll, he'll, you can rejoice in the things of knowing that he is with you and that he's blessing you. And so this morning, uh, as you as you as you read this here uh, in in the, in the Corinthian book here, he says he says here I'm going to read one more thing and I'll I'll, I'll close. Wherefore, where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputers of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And so this morning when, you're, when you uh, have the uh, desire to serve the Lord, the devil has always got this foolishness. He's got other things of this world. Hey, you remember that you're supposed to go see any so-and-so? You remember that you're supposed to go down to the... Uh, backwoods and, and do this or do that. He's got something that you uh, think and, and this body, this body is ready to go. Mm -hmm. This body is ready to go. But the thing of it is, you know what it's all about. So this morning I hope that uh, some of the things that I've said uh, will help you and uh, uh, you'll be uh, I know that, I know that like I said a while ago, I know other people are, uh, are listening and uh, I hope that some of them may uh, get a really a good blessing from this. And remember, what I try to take touch on this morning is that baptism is not for salvation. Amen. Baptism cannot save anybody. Baptism is just for a show to the world that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I put on that uniform. I put on that love for him and, and that's what it's all about this morning so thank you so much for your attention and i hope that it's been a blessing to you amen